for inviting me. Um, really appreciate to be here. Um, I was a little bit nervous because this is my first time in Brussels. And um, when I entered that, that beautiful building, there was that red flashlight at the entrance and that sound and uh, five security guards came closer to me and then I started getting very nervous. But um, fortunately, a colleague from, from you rescued me from getting arrested. So I'm happy to be here. Um, I would like to talk about a very fascinating topic called the next big thing. Um, or you, you name it, I -O I -U IOT. Um, let me start by saying, um, who has an iPhone or a device or whatever in his pocket? Nobody, I know that. <laughs> okay, on the table, on the table, okay. And who's using that in the car? Not for texting, I'm sure, not for Simpson. <laughs> okay, so I assume it's well connected to your car. Um, and that's, uh, if, if you're driving a BMW or Mercedes or whatever, uh, that's commodity. So you can use your smartphone in your car and everyone is used to, to use that. Um, and that's it's the beginning of my, of my short speech. And by the way, if I take more than five minutes, you can turn up the volume and uh, interrupt me, maybe, and uh, 30 seconds, okay. Good. So the point is, how did the custom expectation and the mobility behavior change over time? Um, and uh, if you ask a customer right now, uh, or my father, for example, and he told me, hey, I, I want to buy a car. I want to buy a car. And I will keep it for seven years, and I'll park that car in my garage. This is not the old age, but this is that an OEM was treated like a... Yeah, like a um, vehicle vendor. Nowadays, it changed a little bit because if you if you ask now the young people, they say, "I do not need a car. I use a share car, and um, my smartphone gave me the recommendation due to traffic um, to use the public transportation system." And by the way, my neighbor was awarded because he offers his parking spot for public parking. So you get a little bit benefits of that. Um, and uh, all, my, all my applications I have in my smartphone, I can use it in my car. So for a car manufacturer who sells cars, this is a tremendous development in changing the business. Because if you're a younger generation and they do not want to buy a car, and you have no options or you have no alternatives, then you have a problem. And a lot of customers told us, okay, this BMW is a perfect car for me, but um, without my device, it's not valuable for me. So we have to offer not only premium cars, premium services as well. And uh, that increasing requirements on everyday connectivity anytime, any place, everywhere, that affects customers' mobility behavior. So what are the challenges? Um, we say the connected car is the ultimate Internet of Things device. There's uh, no other way. And we have some, some digital challenges. But first, the Internet or the connected car will change the industry, the car manufacturing industry. That's for sure. And the tables open for new competitors. And we have to take them seriously, like the Googles or the Apples. I mean, if you have $170 billion in your pocket, yeah, somebody should you take seriously. Because you can, you can do what you want. So, I mean, new competitors. Um, we have to deepen our, our, our understanding of customers. Uh, because we want to get in, in really relationship, so we have to know more about them. The innovation cycles require a shift towards software and software services. Um, but all is data driven, so that means we need control of cloud and data in combination with platforms and the ecosystem, and that's crucial. 
So what are our strategies? What that, that mean for a common effector? The digital world is important. It's an important opportunity for differentiation and growth assurance. In 2001, BMW developed a strategy, strategy number one, and that strategy helped us to find new business models to set the right focus on what could happen in the future. Um, and we changed the claim from just premium cars to premium services. And by the way, we have to take care about our cars. So we developed new concepts like the i3 or i8. Um, these cars affect the whole value chain of BMW in terms of production, sales, uh, development, and so forth. But on the other side, and uh, if you use your smartphone in your BMW or whatever, um, we develop connected drive, connected drive services and apps. Have you used one of these services? Okay, I'm waiting. No? Okay. Um, what about real-time traffic information? That means that you have fresh maps in your, your dashboard. You know exactly what is the mo most efficient route when you want to drive from A to B. Um, we have these parking assistant services. Um, we know that 30% of the customers are uh, driving around and uh, try to find a parking spot. And um, maybe we can help them with parking services like Park Now, as I mentioned before, that private people offer their parking spots. Um, for yeah, for people who try to find one. Strategic routing um, for a better flow of traffic and optimization of route choices, uh, but also based on, on data, weather conditions, and so forth. And, and this is new for BMW, intermodal routing. So the system will give you a recommendation to take the public, to take the public um, transportation system. Oh, I think um, it is disruptive. <laughs> so, can you <laughs> oh yeah, okay, I can finish. So, um, we know that the, the growing interconnection of cars uh, with our environment causes enormous economic potential. And uh, to capture the real value of connectivity, uh, vehicle manufacturers have to use the power of data to get inside the customer heads and understand what drivers their behavior and adapt business models even to smaller groups. And uh, coming to my last point, we need a future legal framework, um, a balanced framework between economic requirements, legal and safety issues. Um, and if I can give you a, a preview of the car 2030, I can tell you the car protects everybody against hazards and prevent accidents. Maybe provides 360 view and highlights relevant things, turns off itself and drives up automatically, chauffeurs me when I want to, is my co pilot, knows more than I, and finally protects itself, no more dents and no more scratches. What a wonderful world.